Cambodia has an incredibly rich biodiversity, both wild animals and wild plants, many of which we don't even have names for yet. There are a lot of species that are completely unique to Cambodia and found nowhere else in the world, but also populations of very rare species that have gone extinct in other countries, which still exist here in Cambodia today. Cambodia has gone through a very long, prolonged and difficult conflict that really only ended in 1999. This has left many scars. During that period, the country's intelligentsia were specifically targeted. Any scientist, any educated people kill. Even my parent was a teacher. He just pretended to be a very stupid man. If they know this is an educated person, they kill. People were killed even for wearing spectacles, because if you wore spectacles, you were seen as being able to read and educated. That resulted in the educators in most of the country's written materials in being just systematically destroyed. It was a missing generation. And because the, the civil strife continued up until the late 90s, there was no continuing investigations of the, the country's biodiversity. To, to be able to uh, conserve biodiversity uh, in the longer term, uh, FFI as seeing billion student is the long-term goal. FFI realised that there was a, a, a real need in the country for better education for the people who are employed by the government agencies and employed by the NGOs to, to make environmental decisions. We met with the university here and both found that we viewed these issues in the same way and had a common vision about how we could work together. So with the university we agreed that we would support them to develop a master's course. This is the first master's course in the country and this specialises on conservation but in a way that's very applicable to Cambodia. It's very clear solutions for solving problems in a developing country like this. The people who come through the master's programme, they come from a wide range of backgrounds. Most of them are quite young, some of them have just left school, left the first degree at university. Some of them are staff who already work in the government or already work in Cambodian NGOs. As they go through the course, their skills develop, their confidence develop. And what's been wonderful is that really everyone who's come out of that course has instantly found a new job or good promotion. Alongside the master's programme, over the last three years, we've been working to develop a interdisciplinary group which works in applied research. That group is Cambodian nationals who we've trained up and they go out to protected areas and they're trying to find out what biodiversity is in these places and what are the issues facing this biodiversity. One immediate result of the work done by the field teams has been that we found quite a lot of new species to science. To discover new species is important because you find something that nobody found before. And it's like you give one bird or one, one light to the, to the, to the earth. Yeah? We've then been in a position to describe and name these new species. And that in turn has led to immense public interest, which has raised the profile of biodiversity and the conservation importance of the sites themselves. Before, nobody cared about this. Today, many people start to think this is a good work for Cambodia. The issues that we're addressing are, are nationwide issues. They permeate every sector of the society. And that's not something one can hope to turn around in a matter of a couple of years. It, it's something that will require a generation of work. Over the years, I think we've made huge progress. I think one of the clearest signs of this is a huge demand from projects, from organisations here, to employ these people with these wonderful skills that are coming out of the university. We are leaving in place people in the government agencies, people in the NGOs, people in the communities who are able to look after their environment. So their future is very bright. I mean, they're, they're being fast-tracked now and they can, there's really no limit to where they can go in the future. And hopefully one day, there's no need for us to be here.